Oh, it's a nice friendly greeting. Oh, is that unusual? Um, no. <laughs> okay, I, good. I mean, like, you know, it's just friendlier than I'm, I'm accustomed to with Uber Gotcha, drivers. gotcha. Maybe you've just been meeting a lot more of the um, shy ones. Absolutely, it could be, uh, that could be the case. Well, I'm happy to make your acquaintance, man. Likewise. This is not your first venture out, I'm guessing. Oh, no. Your day is already in progress. <laughs> Almost over, in fact. Almost over, you say? Yeah. Where are you working today? I was working. Okay. What is it you do for work? I'm a chef. Oh, no. Whoa, so you're finishing your shift and you still have a good portion of the day left. I know, right? That's amazing. Is this unusual or regular? No, this is pretty regular. It is, okay. I've uh, sort of positioned myself to um, work more mornings. Nicely done. Yeah, well, I mean, it was sort of like, <laughs> I was sort of given an option, but yeah. you know, it's... Uh, mornings or nights, right? Uh, yeah, basically. Here's the uh, catch 22 that I found in my experience. And yeah. that is, I like my nights. I like my nights to be free. Yeah. So if I wake up early in the morning, then I can pretty much guarantee I have evenings, right? Yeah. In but then meters. to enjoy my evening, Speed though, is 60 kilometers per I hour. can't stay up late, which is why I wanted to have my nights in the first place, because I have to like, get to bed on time to do the whole process again. And right. so I find myself stuck there. <laughs> <laughs> you see the, the struggle, right? I do, yeah. I find um, for me it's it's nice to work the mornings because it's easier to get into a routine. Okay. And um, also, I mean, at least that way, like you know, I do have to work Speed a lot of and weekends, red light camera in but, 100 um, meters. It does Speed mean that, limit like, is 60 my, kilometers per hour. Not so much since COVID, but like my girlfriend, she works a regular, well, <laughs> has more has a more regular sort of schedule than I do. Sure enough. Um, and uh, but like so, she's usually like the evenings are the most the time where she's most free. I see. And, so it's nice uh, to syn synchronize yeah. those two I've schedules. I've even gotten myself into a position now where I've got um, Fridays and Saturdays off. Oh my goodness. Right? As a chef or as a cook. Yeah. That is brilliant. Yeah. Um, that is I really wanted I really wanted Sundays and Mondays. Yeah. But um, Fridays and Saturdays actually work a lot better with my girlfriend's schedule. So yeah. And what was the thinking behind Mondays, Sundays and Mondays? What's that? What was the thinking behind Sunday, Monday? Oh, I, as far as I'm concerned, that's just the best, um, that's sort of the best schedule. Because then, like, you know, Sundays are always kind of weird days in the restaurant because you kind of have, like, that brunch crowd. Yeah. And then um, Mondays are always a shit show because the weekends are busy. Oh, I And so see. Mondays you get, like, all of your orders and there's usually a big prep day. Yeah. I see. <clears throat> so. Yeah. Now, given that you work, like, these ideal hours for uh, one in the kitchen yeah do you still find it as stressful as they would at nighttime in the heat of the busyness um yes and no okay it's kind of a mixed bag right like okay. nighttime is more stressful because you don't necessarily know when it's going to slow down and if you don't know when it's going to slow down you don't know when you can start closing if you don't know when you can't start or when you can start closing, you don't know when you're going to be done work. Right, right. So, but in the mornings, yeah. it's sort of like come in, set up the kitchen, prep, cook for a while, and then go home. Yeah. Basically, once everything's sort of restocked and, and ready to go for the evening. That makes um, sense. <clears throat> so, it's, I, I would say it's a little bit less stressful on, like, my social life. Yeah. Um, to work the mornings, but as far as, like... I find sometimes it's more stressful because I do know that I have an end time, which means I've got to, it's like, got to stay like laser focused all day. Right. Or I won't get everything done. I see. I see. So, we actually had, today was a weird one. Okay. <laughs> Normally Tuesdays are like fairly tame, like they're not super busy and we don't have any orders to come in today and it's not really a big prep day. However, yeah. Yeah. Um, we are rolling out a new menu. April the 1st. Okay. So we had to do a tasting this morning at 9 o'clock. Okay. And around 7 this morning, the oven caught fire. <laughs> the oven caught fire. Um, okay. And not like, not like a little bit. Yeah. 
like, like full it, on. It was it was on fire so bad. Yeah. Um, that the um, server that was that opened this morning called the fire department. Oh. <laughs> um, I hadn't I hadn't gotten there at that point. I okay. didn't start until eight this morning. But um, okay. I I arrived and they were like they were like yeah there was a fire and I was like okay thinking like you know oh there was like a little bit of a grease fire on the yeah. stove top or something like yeah. no big deal. No, it was the fire was so bad that um, it like destroyed the thermostat that controls that like uh, monitors the temperature of the oven and decides yeah. whether it needs to be on or off yeah um, and the guy that came in to fix it this afternoon was saying that in order for that to happen uh, it would have had to be like the fire would have had to have been burning in excess of 1200 degrees Fahrenheit it was so hot that some parts of the thermostat and the valve yeah. uh, were like they had basically been welded together because they'd heated up so much. <laughs> that makes sense. It's like, okay. It's like, okay. Um, I'm trying and, to understand. And uh, like completely like warped the inside of the oven. And um, he said, he, he was like, he's like, you know, if they had opened the oven door, uh, whoever it was that had opened it yeah. would have been in the hospital and it would have set up our, set off our fire suppression system, which is like a $10,000 refill and I mean, you know. Yeah. Like, that's, it would have been an explosion. That's so, nuts. Okay. It could have been worse. It could have been a lot worse. So, I'm trying to understand how an oven catches fire without something that was burning inside. So, therein lies um, sort of the issue. Okay. We braise our brisket overnight in the oven. Okay. And in order to do that, it's got to be submerged in the braising liquid. Okay. And in order to do that, yeah. the inserts that we braise them in yeah. have to be quite full. Okay. And so all of the fat renders off of the brisket and floats up to the top. So this morning, yeah. the girl that took them out of the oven yeah. um, spilled some of the grease that was in the top. Okay. Um, and like, there's always like a little bit that spills. Yeah. But from what I saw inside the oven yeah. um, this afternoon, she, it was she spilled a lot. Uh, and um, so it had gotten down into the bottom of the oven where the burner is. Yeah. And that's it. It all it, it all pooled down there, and then it heated up because after she spilled it, yeah. Um, either like she didn't wipe it or didn't realize what had happened. Yeah. And um, so then she like cranked the oven up, trying to just burn it off. Yeah. Oh. Because when we get a little bit of a spill in the oven, it just you know you turn it up a little bit and it'll slowly burn off. But yeah. what she did was she turned it up to like. 450 degrees yeah. and at this elevation um, like grease and oil will ignite okay. at f between 410 and 425 degrees Fahrenheit. Okay. So <laughs> all of that grease that had spilled down into the bottom of the oven um, caught fire and um, it went from like the one girl was saying that the flames were sort of like coming up in the f like not in, like out of the front of the oven yeah. although they must have been at some point because like the whole front of the oven was black and then like the backsplash was all black yeah um and she said it went from being like just seeing flames a little bit of flames licking up out of the back yeah to like being like coming way up and burning um like out of the you know way out of the top of the oven yeah <laughs> in like 30 seconds yeah really smoky inside the restaurant and so she just like she was like nope she's like she ran outside and called the fire department she... and um, <laughs> she was really she she wasn't worried about the fire as much as she was worried about that she thought we were going to get charged by the fire department for a false alarm because oh. by the time by the time they showed up yeah the fire had gone out yeah oh, which I honestly i can't believe that it did that yeah. was so lucky it must have yeah. just run out of oxygen to burn yeah because like that was significant well yeah it was I mean there was a lot of grease and it was really hot so um it was that kind of day of work today <laughs> that was yeah and then and then we still did and we still did the tasting at oh night seriously night. oh yeah oh, man. did you just have another oven that you're able to utilize or uh no we just did I'm, thankfully we didn't really need the oven for much of what we were rolling out okay so um it was just um I think we had to we had to heat up some waffles on the panini press. <laughs> <laughs> so for the taste testing, is it kind of on you to make
make sure that the presentation is up to par so that everyone has an idea of what it's going to be like? Or? Yeah, so okay. it's like, um, I mean, I don't have the final say on everything, but certainly, yeah. like, so our, this, the feature for this one from March yeah. um, was my feature. Okay. And I, I had pretty much the final say on... That's awesome. Yeah. It's a creative uh, license. Yeah, which was really cool. I didn't really, I sort of had it um, at my last job in the beginning, but they just sort of kept changing things and becoming more and more strict. And I think it was just because, um, you know, somebody somewhere had decided that they were going to do, like, just something ridiculously expensive, like foie gras, with, seared foie gras with white truffles or something. I see. Um, and okay. so we kind of, that slowly got taken away. And here it's sort of like, something interesting or something totally out of left field with a really weird ingredient absolutely let's do it nice so i did um are you familiar with like uh steamed steamed buns like uh like steamed pork buns no okay well it's something that um my nanny used to feed me when i was a little kid and um it's a chinese sort of dim sum yeah type thing and yeah it's just like um it's just, it's basically just a bun, but yeah. steamed instead of baked, yeah. and it's filled with, um, like, barbecue pork. Okay, now I, I, I got the picture now. Yeah. yeah, yeah, Um, and so, anyways, so she used to feed me those when I was really little, and then I wanted to do something with duck, and then I also, um... Which I've heard is really hard to cook. It is, yeah, and to get it to turn out right, it right. can be, it's kind of finicky, so... Okay. Um, and I really also love Vietnamese 